This is my pro bike. Although quite clearly I'm not a pro anymore, this is the bike that I've been riding since the spring of this year and it's Norbea Orca in Team Cofidis Team Colours. Orbea was a company started way back in 1840 by the Orbea brothers and before they started producing bicycles by the bucket load they actually produced guns and didn't make their first bikes until 1930. Now this is one of the later iterations of the Orca. They first started making carbon bikes back in 2003. Now the name Orca is quite interesting. Now originally I thought it was something to do with a killer whale but the O and the R, well that's the first two letters of Orbea, and the C and the A, well that's the first two letters in carbon. Now as I've already mentioned, the bike comes in Cofidis team colours, but what I didn't expect when I first got the bike was the fact that I appear to be actually riding one of the rider's bikes from the team itself. So if you look on the top tube here, there's an actual name badge and French flag for Cyril Limoine. Now an interesting feature of this particular bike is that the riders at Cofflis only get one bike. Now most teams now, as many of you know, get an aero bike and a lighter bike typically used in the high mountains for example. But the Cofflis riders get one. This bike essentially does it all. It's very, very stiff. It's very aerodynamic. So basically you can use it quite effectively on all sorts of terrain. And I've certainly done that over the last few months. I've ridden it in the mountains of Andorra. I've also ridden it on Pave as well and it copes with pretty much everything. So there's a real blend of stiffness. You can see at the bottom, it's a really, really bulky, thick um, bottom bracket area. Pretty beefy seat stays as well, and a triangular shaped down tube, whilst the rest of the bike, so the rear stays and the top tube, are pretty thin and pretty wispy, but it does handle particularly well. Now, my commute on which I ride this bike quite often, I actually rode it into work today, is pretty brutal. I got two very steep, long climbs and some pretty technical descents as well. And this bike, I must admit, eats them up for breakfast. Now, in relation to geometry, this bike is pretty aggressive. It's a really, really racy setup. So some pretty steep angles on it, quite a shallow head tube so you can get low at the front. And as you can see, I've got my stem pretty slammed as per the pros. It's a position that I'm pretty much used to, so I do like to get low at the front. Now, a really unusual feature of this bike when it arrived, for me, in fact, was the fact that it had narrow bars. I usually ride 42 bars. This had 40s on it. It took me a while to get it dialed in, but I must admit, when you get on the drops on a nice flat bit of road, you certainly are a little bit more aero, and I quite like it. So component-wise, I'm pretty spoiled with Di2 Shimano Durace, of course, which I really do like. It's so tactile, so easy to use. Now, gearing-wise, I've not gone for the classic 5339 that I used to use and that you see many pros use. I've got a nice compact setup, which allows us to ride pretty easily in the high mountains and also makes my rather brutal commute to work far easier. So I've got a 50 chain ring at the front and a very small 34 uh, inner ring on the bottom there. Um, but all the bikes that I've got, I've got a 36. So that gives you a really low ratio. I've got an 1128 at the back, but the beautiful thing about having a 34 up front is that it can ride pretty happily up lots of climbs by riding on the middle of the block. Here at GCM we use Physique saddles and the saddle of choice for me is the Antares. Nice little bit of detail in there, fits perfectly with the look of the bike. Now in relation to the wheel set, I've gone for Vision Metron 40s. So deep section, but not overly deep. So pretty much intermediate. So suitable for all sorts of terrain, pretty much like the bike in fact. So these handle pretty well on descents, cornering is fine, and they're also pretty sprightly on the climbs. And they're topped out with Victoria CX high pressure 25 mil tires. Now another little bit of dual functionality for you on this bike, aside from the frame, is the pedals. These are made by PowerTap, so they provide power as well as read by the dual head unit up top. Now in terms of personalizing this bike, aside from sticking a little sticker on there, in complete contrast to the actual owner of this bike, it should have been Cyril Limoinier's, is the fact that I have spacers on the left-hand crank to just shift the pedal out a little bit because my left leg does tend to track a little bit and sometimes just clips the top tube. That's my only little adaptation, as it were. Now, although I continue to ride this bike many times a week, my favorite memory of the year so far is riding this bike in the Andorran mountains, in particular up the Arcalis. And going down wasn't too bad either. Now, if you want to see another pro bike, or a presenter's bike in fact, how about clicking just up here and you can see Lloyd's Trek 
Madone Super Aero. And if you fancy seeing a bit of a retro bike, a retro Orbea Orca, in fact, when I donned the Uskal Tel kit, click just down here. And to subscribe to GCN, you know what to do. Click on the globe. And don't forget to share and like this video too.